You got that? Ezekiel 16 and verse 44. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 44. Behold, everyone that uses Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee. So everyone that uses Proverbs or wise sayings are going to use this, this proverb for you, sis. Let's see what this proverb is. Read. Say, as is the mother. As is the who? As is the mother. As is the mother, so is what? So is her daughter. Her what? Is her daughter. Teaching her to wear dresses and, and putting them on her is good. But if you're her example, when she's old enough, she's going to do what you told her. She's going to do what you, she saw you do. She's going to follow your example, sis. Because the scriptures say what again? Read that. Behold, everyone that useth the Proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, As is the mother, so is her daughter. That's what the, the scriptures say. As is the mother, so is the daughter. So how you want your daughter to walk, that's how you ought to walk. Now for your sons, right? How old is your oldest son? What's your name, man? Joshua. Josh powerful name, man. Powerful. You familiar with Joshua in the scriptures? You know about Joshua? Joshua was a mighty warrior, right? So you're a warrior, man? All praises. Let me show you what warriors do. Go to 1 Kings 2. I'm going to show you what warriors do first. Because believe it or not, this your day too, Joshua. That's right. You've been raised up to be a prophet of the Lord. Before, matter of fact, Jeremiah 1 and 5. Bring Start there. Up. Jeremiah 1 and 5. I'm going to show you something, Joshua. Come close, man. We ain't out here to bite y'all, man. Y'all people, we love y'all, man. That's a mighty prince. That's a god before me. That's a princess before me. That's a god. What's his name? Joseph. Joe? My name, too. That's my name, too. So all praises. We got something in common, little, you, little Yosef. All right? So, Joshua, this is for you, right? Watch this. Let me show you how the Most High feels about you. You and your brother, right? Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before you even formed in your mom's belly, God knew you and had a purpose for you, Joshua, and for Joseph. Bring it out. Right? That's what God said. Before you was formed in your mom's belly, he knew you. Knew your name, what your name would be, how you would look, everything you would do in life. He knew that, right? Read. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And he blessed you, and he put you to a great and mighty purpose, Joshua. That's what he did before you was even born. Before the thought of you being in your mom's womb. God knew what, what your life was going to be. He knew today you would be standing here before the prophets of the Lord. Read. And I ordained thee. And he ordained you a what? A prophet. A what? A prophet. A what? A prophet unto the nations. You a prophet in training and you don't even know it. That's right. You a prophet in training and you don't even know it. Right? Read that again. And weapons of war. You're his weapons. The scriptures call God a man of war. He is a mighty God. And all the people that treat you like uh, trash and hate you, God hates them. And he's going to destroy them for your sake. That's right. For your sake. For your mom's sake. But it starts with you, right? Read. For with thee, I will break pieces, I will break in pieces the nations. With you, with you, with y'all, sis, God's going to break in pieces the nations. All the people that thought you were black, right. niggas, negroes, worthless, nothing, baby mamas, baby daddies. All those people that taught you that, God says with you, he's going to break in pieces the nations, right? Finish that up. And with thee, will I destroy kingdoms. And you going to destroy kingdoms. That's mighty, right? Ain't that something you want to do? Ain't you tired of living in the ghetto? Don't you want to be about something in life? All oh, praises, Joshua. That's a beautiful spirit. What tribe y'all from, sis? Uh, you want to say Judah? Okay, all oh, praises. Christ is from the tribe of Judah, sis. All oh, praises. So if y'all from the tribe of Judah, that's Christ. Get that for me real quick. Give me, give me uh, Christ. Christ uh, from the tribe of Judah. Christ came from this same tribe. So if Christ was alive today, guess what he would be? be a so-called black man. He would look like me. He look like you. He look like you, sis. But let's prove that. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 7, verse 14. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. It's evident. I Meaning it ain't no mistaking. Christ came out of the tribe of Judah. Christ would be a so-called black man today. Read. I wish tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. Right. Give me our uh, revelations. Give me Christ real quick. Now let's prove that, right? Because the scripture said, any man speak let him speak as the oracles of God. So nothing I say out of my mouth is not going to match with this Bible. Otherwise, my teaching is in vain, and I'm a liar. Don't listen to anything I say. But if I can prove everything I say out of this Bible, and we believe in God, right? Hear God, not me. Scripture say, curse is the man that trusted in man, right? Trust in God, right? What does God say? Matter of fact, hold that. 
get me uh, John 738. Was it uh, John? Yeah, John 738. Give me that real quick. I'm, a, I'm painting the picture real quick, right? Because we said Christ sprang out of Judah, right? And the signs say Judah is the American blacks. So Christ would be a black man, right? Thus say the scriptures. Or me. Read. He that believeth on me. Call it. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So Christ out of his own mouth said, he that believes on me as the Bible says, not as Christianity teaches me. Christianity said, this is Jesus. You right? Or, you know, uh, Christ is many colors or Christ looks like everybody. That's a lie. That's right. The Bible doesn't say that. Christ said what? Read what Christ said again. The book of John, chapter 7, verse 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So Christ said, if you believe what the Bible says about me, out of your belly going to flow rivers of living water, meaning life, truth, right? Read uh, Revelations. Now, let's see what the Bible says Christ looks like. Bring it up. Not my words, God's words, right? We believe God, right? Revelations 1 and 14. Start at verse 1. Revelations 1 and 1. Right? So this is in the back of the Bible, right? We're going to find out what Christ looked like. Now I want you to pay attention to these two images, right? Growing up, Joshua, Joseph, sister uh, Azizi, right? And what's the, what's the baby girl name? Morgan. Morgan, Azizi, Joseph, Joshua, right? Pay attention to these two signs, right? One image is what was given to us in slavery. The other is a true depiction. Let's find out according to the Bible, which is the true depiction of Christ. Read verse 1. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The re revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants. So it says the revelation or the revealing of Christ. And I'm going to show you why Christ will have to be revealed in the last days. Because our enemies did something rather crafty with that image, That's right. right? So Christ would be revealed in these last days and showed to, to the prophets, to the people. Read it again from the top. The book of Revelation, chapter one, verse one. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants. To show unto his servants. Things which must shortly come to pass. So Christ will have to be revealed in these last days because something um, dangerous will happen to the image of Christ and the black man, right? Now drop to verse 14. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, I want you to go with me on a, let's, let's play, um, what's, what's the process of elimination, right? You in school, how, what grade you in? When you take tests, right, you do process of elimination, right? Let's do that same thing. Let's take a, a, a test, which is Christ. Read that again. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So, which one of these images have white and woolly hair? That one, right? Now I want you to touch your hair. Touch your hair. You ever seen a, a, a sheep with wool? Does a sheep have hair more like that or more like yours? Touch yours. Who got woolly hair? Who got woolly hair? And who else? And who else? You. You got woolly hair. Your mom, your sister, your brother got woolly hair. I have woolly hair. These brothers have woolly hair, right? That's right one for this one, right? Read on. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as they burned in a furnace. So his feet, if I look at your feet, right, I'm looking at your feet. Are your feet the same color as your, your other body? So if Christ's feet was already brown, as if they burned in a furnace, right? If I take that piece of paper and burn it, what color is it going to turn? So what color is Christ? He black. So is that the truth? That's the truth, right? All praises. And you, you said all y'all from the tribe of Judas's? Okay, all praises. Babies, son, everybody, right? Okay, all praises, right? Now, this for you, sis. Proverbs 22 and 6. Give me that real quick. So, sis, you you the head of, of uh, the your children right now. Is, is there a, a father that lives with child? Is there a father with child? Their dad lives with you. Is he married to you, sis? You're engaged? Okay, he got to marry you. Y'all got to marry, sis. The scriptures say marriage is honorable and all. Teach those young men and women a, a, a righteous example. And I believe you want to, otherwise you wouldn't be standing here and you wouldn't be watching online. So I believe you want to change. That's beautiful. That's good, sis. Read this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. The scriptures commands the mothers and fathers to train up their children in the way that they should go. 
train him, teach him diligently, right? Read. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So if you teach them while they're young, while they're baby babies, when they get older, don't steal when they, and pop the bust their tail, sis. Bust their tail. You know why you gotta bust their tail? Because if they don't learn how to, if they don't learn as a consequence from their actions from you, who they gonna learn it from? They gonna learn it from that white man out there with, with a gun, a badge, and, and a baton. That's right. And it's not gonna be good, right? We don't want that. That's happening enough to our sons. Is it not? You know what I'm Don't you worry about that young man, that young man? Because believe it or not, sis, it's a target on their back. You know what I'm By the time he's, he's in the fifth grade now, how old is he? 11 years old. By the time that, that young man is 13 years old, people are going to look at him and say, I feared for my life. But he's a child, right? And I, they, they say, already do it. So guess what? It's more of a purpose for us to raise them and train them up righteously. So that they do the right thing. So that you can, your son can walk out the door, go into the store, and you have a peace of mind that, go to Rock 30 real quick. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Because too many of our children wander about in the streets. No heads, no protection, no parents. We don't care what they're doing. But then they get shot down in the street or something. Then we, oh, my baby. Oh, he was a good kid. But what was he doing? How do you know he was a good kid? He might have been trying to rob somebody. Right. He may have been beating up somebody. He might have been dealing drugs. That's right. Your baby might have been the damn devil. You know? And it starts with us. We the devil and we raise devils. But I'm going to show you why it's important for you to train them up and, and beat their tail when they go off. Read it out. Side of verse uh, th uh, one. <laughs> the book of Sirach, chapter 30, verse 1. He that loved his son causes him off to feel the rod. So you love your sons, right, sis? Scripture says if you love your sons, cause his behind often to feel the rod. Cause his tail often to feel the rod. It don't mean whoop them for every stupid little thing, but when they jack up and it's serious to teach them a lesson, bust their behind. Put them to labor. Make it hurt for them. Why? Because they're going to think. Hey man, let's go, let's go steal this, this stuff over here. Wait a minute, last time I stole from my mom, she lit my consequence. Now I'm good, man. That's what it's gonna do. Right. It's called muscle memory, sis. Yep. Right? All right, read it again. He that loved his son causes him off to fill the rod, read. that he may have joy of him in the end. So in the end, you chastise him, spank him, teach him, chastise him, punish him, because in the end, when they're adults, they, he's married. He's taking care of his children. That's right. She's married. She's doing right by her husband. Taking care of her children. You can, you can breathe easy now, sis. Your children gonna be all right. That doesn't mean bad things ain't gonna happen. That doesn't mean they're not gonna have trials and tribulations. That just means that they're going, they're going to live after God and not after the world. Right. That's what that means. But that starts with you, sis, right? Now I'm gonna give you another law. You, you know uh, today's the Sabbath, right? So what's, what are we supposed to be doing on the Sabbath, sis? What you, you raising your hand? What are we supposed to be doing on Saturday? We're not supposed to go to the store, which means what? We're not supposed to be... No, you don't got to stay at home necessarily. We, we, are we at home? We ain't at home. I'm, I'm not in my house. They ain't out of their house. We out here. We out here with you. Right. The script say we're supposed to convocate. But you're right. We're not supposed to buy and sell. Get that. You got that for me? Uh, what is it? Uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah 10, 31. Nehemiah 10 and 31. We're not supposed to buy and sell. That's good that you're teaching him since he knows that because you, right? All oh, praises. That's good. Watch this. We're going to prove it, right? If any man speak, right? Read. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, verse 31. And if the people of the land bring war or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. So we're not supposed to be buying that. You see them over there across the street selling fish plates and stuff? They're not supposed to be doing that. Right. That's breaking the law of Sabbath. They in sin right now. If it will please the Lord to destroy them, they screwed. Because they breaking the law of Sabbath. That's right. Now they may not know that. Or maybe they do because we've been out here for a few hours. So maybe they know it. Maybe they don't care. Either way, that's sin. We ain't supposed to do that, right? Good. That's good that you're teaching him that. And it's good that he understands that, right? Now, my man, my man has on a shirt, right? He says, dude, it's my birthday. You don't celebrate birthdays, do you, sis? Oh. All oh, praises, it's just a cert. But um, give me, um, what is it? First Thessalonians 5, 21, I think. That's it. Let's see, it's 21, right? So it, it is just a shirt, sis. There's nothing wrong with wearing that shirt, you know? It's just a shirt, right? But as Israelites, right, it's very important of us to, to maintain a certain appearance. We don't want to become a stumbling block to anybody, right? That's right. Get that real quick. First, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. 21. 
prove all things. 22, 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. The scriptures say abstain from all appearances of evil. So let's say you walking around, you know, you got some fringes. Hopefully next time I see you got fringes in a skirt or a dress, right? He got some fringes, he got some fringes. Let's say you walking around with fringes on. Somebody knows you Israel, but reads my man's shirt and say, dude, it's my birthday. What are they gonna assume? They're gonna assume we celebrate birthdays, right? And what if they may want to repent? What if they, the Israelite stuff is good, but now they're like, oh, nah, I can't mess with them because they're celebrating birthdays. That's because the scriptures say this, read. Prove all things. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Abstain from all appearances of evil, right? Now, let me ask you a question, Joshua, right? No, we're not supposed to celebrate birthdays, right? You know where in the scriptures it say not to celebrate birthdays? Has anybody showed you in the scriptures where? Okay, let's get that real quick. Give me, give me uh, Ecclesiastes 7 real quick. Ecclesiastes 7. We're going to start there. Right? Because it's never been a custom of, of the Israelites. These people, you, your mom, your brothers, your sisters, us. That's never been our custom. That's a custom of these people that put us in captivity, right. in slavery. Right? Read that. Please up a verse. Uh, verse uh, 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1. A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth. So the scriptures say the day that you, you pass away is better than your birthday. You know why? Because you was born a slave. I was born a slave, right? We were born in the ghettos of America, on the bottom of society. We don't have nothing to our name. We're gonna die with nothing to our name. So, so what's the point of celebrating a birthday? We don't have anything. The day we pass away, we with the Lord now. And when we come back, we're not going to meet the people that hate us as men. We're going to meet them as gods. Right. That's what we're going to meet them as. You're going to be a god one day with power. You want power? You like superheroes? You like being able to run fast and, you know, fly and stuff like that? That's, that's your heritage. Because you're a son of God. You don't believe me? You don't believe me that you're a god? Psalms 81. Psalms 81. Or 82 and 6. Psalms 82 and 6. I'm going to prove all things. I'm going to prove that you're a god. Right, because you're a son of the living God. You're a son of God. That's a son of God. Those are daughters of God. These are sons of God. Believe it or not. Read. Book of Psalms, chapter 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods. What did the Bible say? Ye are gods. What are you, Joshua? What's your brother, Joshua? Read it again. I have said, ye are gods. God said, you are gods. Read. And all of you are children of the Most High. And you gods because you descendants from the true God. That's right. The God that says, you are my children, none else. Right. You. So by right, you are God. If you shall keep the commandments of God and get back to your heritage. Read. But ye shall die like men. But because we sinned against God, we die like men now. Right. So do you know what sin is? What's sin? If I ask you, what's sin? Doing bad things, right? What sin, sis? Not following God's Good, not following God's laws, right? Now you know where to find that in the scriptures? Um, maybe, but we're gonna show you, sis, so that when you walk away, you know you got the scripture and everything, because I can tell you teach your children. We just gonna sharpen you a little bit more and get you to apply action so that next time we see you, sis, you shining, sis. You shining, sis. That's what we want you to do, read. The book of 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. Three. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. Three. For the sin, for sin is the transgression of the law. What scripture was that, sis? Can you tell me? No, I'm sorry. Read it again. 1 John, chapter 3, verse 4. What scripture? 1 John 3 and 4. Read it again. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So sin is the transgression of the law. When we break the laws of God, we're in sin. Right? But if we keep the laws of God, now we're in righteousness. Right. Now God is pleased with us. Now we, we're not at risk of judgment. Now we can, we one step closer to getting out of this hellhole we're in.
but you will sound odd For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man I ain't saying that no more, it sounds wrong, man This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ Please subscribe to our YouTube channels Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram. Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.